So first of all, welcome. I think that's uh, the last we can start with. <laughs> yeah, we are a restaurant firm here. This is Wesley, I'm Vilmos. And finally, we are here to begin the Dilma Global Challenge. It was a very big journey for us. But uh, yeah, let's start, start with it, Wes. I'm going to start directly with the perfect serve. Um, yeah, the, the, the regulation uh, changed since uh, last time we have extra perfect serve. So I thought it's uh, very good to uh, start with a lighter tea to uh, cleanse the palate after the breakfast you just have. Um, yeah, to, to get a yeah, clean taste for everything what's uh, coming up next. Using the Ranwata for that. So it's uh, around 1800 meters. Yeah, a light, smooth, and not together uh, yeah, elegant uh, taste is what we're looking for. Using five grams for a half liter. Well, in the meantime, I, I would like to say a few words about our uh, philosophy. We work with local products in Amsterdam. We have our own uh, uh, farmers. We work with uh, our own rooftop gar uh, garden. We even have our own bees. And uh, yeah, we, we prefer fish from the nor northern sea. This time, we brought some ingredients with us because we wanted to represent our uh, uh, culture. But at, at the same time, we wanted to keep the attention on the, on the local products, such as uh, tuna, langoust, passion fruit, and, and uh, coconut, as much as possible. The, we try to uh, get the philosophy of the restaurant and, of course, the philosophy of the tea on the table as well. So a lot of natural products. Um, yeah, just what do we need on the table. Um, uh, I put some uh, condiments on the table for the teas. I would not recommend one with the ranwata because I like the, the, the pure and delicate flavor of the tea. But if you need some, uh, yeah, it is available. It's uh, maybe good to tell that the honey that's on the table and the honey we're going to use in our dishes are from our own uh, beehives on the rooftop of the restaurant. Um, yeah, clear honey. Um, there are just a couple uh, beehives in Amsterdam and we own uh, four of them. So. So it's good to have your own products. Yeah. That's why we work with the local uh, ingredients in Holland with the local farmers. You can keep good contact with them. You can tell them what quality you require for your restaurant. Um, and you can mm. go by and check it. If you import everything from a couple of thousand, couple of thousand kilometers away, it's always hard to get the uh, yeah, personal contact. Go by visiting the farm. And uh, about the menu, just a few words. Um, we work with very clean flavors. We like, we like to concentrate on two or three flavors. So we don't do overcomplicated dishes. We don't do any magic, really. The product speaks for itself. This is the carrot meal. So our first dish will be a tea inspired carrot meal. We are too noisy, we've got to move there. And that is, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we brought some green peas with us from Amsterdam. Yeah. This is a green tea. We only uh, complemented the flavors with some mint and uh, some long oil. Mm. And this is a tea with some Not exactly, but almost. <laughs> I just. Uh, decided to use some oolong oil because the acidity which comes from the yeah we use we, we use some lime and the, the the tea is very spice spicy as well we need to use, use some oil to balance out the flavor what flavor is the oil the oil is uh, is made from the oolong tea i used like quite a lot yes just a bit of oil yeah sure 
Is there some in here already? I can see. Is there some in here already, or just this only one? for the for for the ravioli filling? I use some some oil, uh, and oil. and on the top. Yes, the same one. Can, can you give some? Maybe? Sure. This is what I was talking about extracting the flavor. This for you. Fennel. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. Welcome to the finals of the Dilma Real High Tea Global Challenge. We are here in Colombo um, and the first team has just started. The first team is actually from Dilma Restaurant Vermeer, which is um, a one Michelin star restaurant, I understand, uh, from Amsterdam. So we have with us their mentor, Chef Rudolf Brand, um, who is going to tell us a little bit more maybe about the restaurant. Yes. Uh, we are a one Michelin star restaurant in Amsterdam. Uh, we're very focused on uh, local products and vegetables and herbs in, uh, in, in general. Uh, that resulted a few years ago when we started our own rooftop garden where we harvest small vegetables and fresh herbs daily. And uh, our executive uh, chef Chris Naylor started uh, um, to have beehives uh, three or four years ago, which we sold it to have, nowadays we have four beehives, where we harvest the honey, we use it in the hotel, in the restaurant kitchen, and also here today in the challenge. Okay. Um, so could you tell us a little bit more about the journey, you know, of the, the high tea journey yeah, sure. that has been? Yeah, we started, uh, f the guys uh, did the challenge in uh, the Netherlands, the national competition, uh, they won it last year. And uh, ever since we've been uh, talking about this, uh, the world, uh, the global challenge, uh, uh, nearly daily, uh, tasting the different kind of teas, thinking about the menus, about the presentation, about the extra things to uh, impress the jury, uh, and to um, uh, to use the the, the high quality of uh, Dilma teas in general, also in the restaurant. Um, and the last week since we arrived here on uh, Friday has been a very exciting ride uh, with lots of, uh, lots of impressions towards today, towards the challenge. So you mentioned some extra things, right, that you are, you are planning. So would you like to share with us a little bit about the extra things without revealing too much? Um, the extra things is we've, we were very uh, much focused on the use of the vegetables and the herbs like we do in the restaurant back home. And... Um, to bring some of those special herbs uh, uh, over here in Colombo, uh, to bring the honey from uh, the Amsterdam rooftop, those kind of things, yeah. And you mentioned something about uh, a very natural outlook as well, to reflect uh, the restaurant. Yeah, the very natural outlook um, is what we're trying to do, um, the reflection of the restaurant, the menu we have. Um, you can see it in the, the Chef White's film is wearing, but also in the table setting. We use a lot of uh, natural products to enhance the experience of uh, uh, healthy vegetable-based cookery. So is high tea a very um, common culture in the Netherlands? I wouldn't say a very common culture, but it is uh, mainly done in, in hotel restaurants, uh, where you still have the classical setup of the high tea, um, which the Dilma family is so looking forward to change that for the 21st century. So it makes it very much uh, a challenge to be part of that. So how do you think, uh, in your opinion, since the Dilma Real High Tea Challenge has started, um, how has that helped to shape the high tea culture in, in, in Netherlands? 
Um, till today, maybe not that much yet, but uh, hopefully, uh, when we are successful here, uh, we can help to improve the the quality, the change in the high tea for the Netherlands, uh, the, the Dutch people, the Dutch market itself. Um, I think the classical setup of the high tea will always remain in the, the classical uh, hotels. However, it is interesting to see how that can evolve and develop after so this competition. And, you know, personally, because I'm sure you've done a lot of tea tastings uh, since so, yeah. embarking on the high tea journey. Yes. Um, how, you know, what is your favorite high tea and what do you like about Dilma teas? Uh, my personal favorite is uh, the Darjeeling uh, tea. Um, but for instance, uh, Filmus is very keen on the springtime oolong with the uh, ginger, which is also used in today's competition in one of the tea-inspired dishes. Uh, what I personally like about the Dilma teas is, apart from the high quality and the different ranges, uh, they offer a very wide uh, selection of tea, uh, black teas, green teas, uh, different kind of infusions and also flavoured teas. You know, could you also, I know you spent a lot of time uh, with the competitors, could you tell us a little bit more about them and what do you as their mentor hope to see, you know, from this, uh, the finals? Um, the two guys are forming a, a really good team, they're very different from each other but uh, I think that's a, a, the right combination to uh, compete in this kind of uh, challenges. Um, films, for instance, is uh, very much focused on the on the food part. Obviously, he's the chef, but um, um, to find the right combinations in in terms of the food pairing, the tea pairing uh, uh, dishes, where Wesley is very much about the whole overview. The, the, so the dressing of the table, the combination, the matching with the the food and the teas, um, and they both have their personal style. And I'm here then to sort of mix that all together and make sure that, you know, that everything runs smoothly. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Phew. Yeah. So a little bit about the pairing for my part. Um, yeah, the tea got that elegant and at the same time the richness of the tea. Um, with a little bit of the vennel, the spice of the clove, will compare perfectly with the soft and, soft and pure flavor of the tuna. At the same time, uh, the yogurt uh, and the seaweed are helping uh, to get the full power of the tea, but also the full taste of the, of the dish. Uh, the dish is very clean. It's only, it's only just the, the vegetables uh, and, and, uh, and the fish. And I, I created two, two uh, crunchy krupuk with it. One is with parmesan, the other one is with a little bit of seaweed. So please uh, use your hands and uh, try both. It, yeah, the, the, the soul stone comes from uh, Pakistan yeah. originally yeah. and uh, it's very, very pure because it, it, uh, it didn't have any contact with, uh, with uh, um, chemicals or, 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 or any, any so you, you know. you heat it and then... You, you need to heat it very, uh, very much in, in, in the oven. But, uh, but you can even use it cold and then, and, and then serve some, uh, some cold fish in it because then the, the saltiness goes through anyway.
So in the meanwhile, I'll continue with the next dish or with the next drink. Um, it's going to be the cold non-alcoholic cocktail. Yeah. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. As Sh always. <laughs> Shaked with the, yusu, the, the juice of a yuzu, Asian citrus, uh, with a little more bitters that will bring up the bitters of the tea. A little bit of sea banana. It's a very silty seaweed. Um, a little bit of chili pepper. And I'm using the medavata tea for that. Um, yeah. I like the vatas, sorry for that. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, you, can, you can really taste the difference in elevation, um, and it's really, really good to pair with food. Um, as compared as a wine, I'm, normally I'm a sommelier, so that's, that's why I compare tea to a wine. Um, it, it's very good to, to get the, the, uh, the pairings. We do the pairings in the restaurant now as well, not really with cocktails, but more with pure teas, um, with the food, and then, yeah, with the vatas, I won't say it's easy, but there's a lot more options because of the elevations. And in this case, um, it will help the, uh, uh, the, yeah. the yuzu will help the bitters in the, in, the, in the vata, but also the richness. And because of the silty taste of the uh, seaweed, that's what I think you get a full package. And of course, the ice cubes are made of the medavata as well. <coughs> Wesley, Wesley is more like a, a Nuara Elia Vata series, and uh, and all. <laughs> he's he's more into the pure purities, and I'm and I'm the the Earl Grey guy. So the next dish will be a, a local langoust. We brought some uh, pumpkin with us from, uh, from Holland and the uh, sea bokthorn. When I tasted the, the langoust in Sri Lanka, it was very, 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 very sweet. I love that. And then, then, and then I knew it, it would work very, very well with a, with a, with a uh, berry, which has, has, ha has a lot of acidity. So the acidity against the sweetness of the langoust, that's, that's what this dish is about. And again, the food pairing is, uh, I use the honey in a cocktail, not because of the sweetness, but because of the, yeah, the body inside your mouth. Um, get it a little more fatty. Um, we'll go with the sweetness of the lobster. And at the same time, yeah, the seaweed will help the, the silty flavor. And at the same, at the other time, the chili, yeah, it, it makes it one happy family. It's kind of like that. <laughs> Take this one. So please try to uh, try to get a bite from the langus together with the uh, with the foam and the uh, sea bokhtorn berries, and then it will complement each other very well.
So in the meanwhile, I uh, brew the next perfect serve. This time in uh, in food uh, pairing with the next dish. Filmus is going to prepare. We mentioned the honey as well. Uh, we made also a dish out of the honey. Um, honey is, uh, yeah, it's like sticking to your mouth. So you need something that will rinse the honey on a good way. Um, so I'm, I choose the yadavata for that. Uh, full earthy flavors, good bitters. Uh, give it a four minute brew so all the bitters will come up uh, in the tea. Uh, together with the, the honey in the dish, uh, yeah. <laughs> Shall I say, I love it. <laughs> Of course, we couldn't leave our uh, honey at home, so we brought some with us. And then we, we, uh, we created a very classical, but uh, in, in my, my, my opinion, super fantastic uh, uh, dish, which is a honey custard with uh, lavender foam and just a crispy, su uh, crispy su sublay biscuit. Um, yeah, my, my idea was just to keep the flavors very simple and then, and then all what you can taste is the honey against the lavender. I thought this perfect serve has to be in a white cup, so you can see the flavor, or you can see the color of the tea. And um, yeah, you can, you can smell it very good as well. Could you put the, uh, the that one in the jock? I'm going to continue direct with the next uh, cocktail. I mean, I like high teas, and I think one of the essentials is to have a sparkling drink in your high tea. Um, So we have with, with us here um, Robert Schinkel, a well-known mixologist from the Netherlands. Robert, I believe you have been uh, working a lot with uh, the two teams from Netherlands the last uh, last few months. Could you share with us a little bit about you know the teams as well as their progress so far? 
Uh, well, obviously, both teams are very good. They've been the national winners from the 2013 competition and the 2014 competition. And, uh, well, their first performance made them a national winner. And uh, well, for one team, two years, and for the other team, one year has passed. And in that time, they've progressed a lot. Uh, because the more you work with T, the, more you, uh, the better you understand the T. And I think what they're bringing to the table in this competition will be absolutely fabulous. And uh, any interesting, uh, you know, efforts that you have observed so far, you know? We're, well, without spilling the beans, they will bring very interesting techniques to the table. They both come from uh, very creative restaurants. Uh, both uh, have been awarded with Michelin stars, so that is a, a sign of quality and creativity. And that's what they're going to bring to this high tea as well. A lot of creativity and a lot of quality. And you have been with the Dilma Real High Tea Challenge globally as well, yes. not just in Amster, uh, not just in Netherlands. Um, how, you know, in your opinion, has this effort, right, this challenge, helped to shape the high tea culture in Netherlands? Uh, well, in the Netherlands, it is. Um, it basically it opened a door, like in many other countries, because tea was not uh, regarded as a ingredient for cooking or even an ingredient for cocktails. Although it's been around for for a very long time, and mixing them has been something that's been on for centuries as well. It was sort of a forgotten ingredient, and uh, with this competition, Dilma uh, opened a door. They unlocked a door, and it was up to the contestants to open it. And um, they've opened it. They've gone into the room, and now other people are following. Uh, their, their, their colleagues, their, um, uh, the, the friends, the people they work with, uh, but also the people who come to their restaurants. They are rediscovering tea. Thank you very much, Robert. Thank you. My pleasure. Yep. And again, vodka is also helping the tea flavor uh, going up high. I think that's uh, what it's all about tonight, yeah. or t this morning, actually. Take the tea? Sure, thank you. Uh, we did we did some uh, some show with this dish. <coughs> what I want what I wanted to what I wanted you to have is the full experience of the smell of the tea. So what you can get is a smell sample from from, from, from the smoke and ho and hopefully the tea will come true with all the spices. So it's a very strong brewed breakfast tea with the spices. And hopefully the flavor comes through. So I'm going to introduce the next main item for the dish film was made. The main item is chocolate. Chocolate is something a lot of people think it's not uh, sustainable. This chocolate is from the chocolate makers in Amsterdam. Got a only uh, engineless sail ship uh, what's used for cargo, uh, taking the raw cocoa beans from Congo and uh, Dominican Republic to Amsterdam. Um, yeah, make it a chocolate and uh, bring it by bike to our restaurant. So it's, uh, it, it, it's yeah. I think fair trade chocolate is, is not big enough to describe. It's more like, uh, yeah, fair, yeah, sustainable chocolate. Um, but filmers can tell uh, a lot of it uh, what he done with it. Yeah, sure. First. Two minutes. Sir. Yeah, it's good. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on 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 the table now. The chocolate. So please. Uh, Enjoy it. Uh, it 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 still goes together with with the drink in my in my opinion. What do you say, uh, uh, Wesley? Yeah, I know it's not allowed, but uh, yeah, keep a little zip from the last cocktail. with this uh because the chocolate is is yeah, it has a very very a very strong, very powerful taste uh, with the Earl Grey. So uh, it's not it's nice to have a, a sip of tea next to it. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Well, the chocolate dish is about uh, different, different textures of chocolate. I infuse the Earl Grey in, in, in the milk. I, I, I choose to use um, cold brewing for 20, 24 hours. So then, so then I 
in this way I, I, I could really extract the, the, the Earl Grey fla flavor into the milk. And then I use the same milk for the chocolate mousse, for the cho chocolate meringue, and for the chocolate crumb. 30 seconds. So let's finish off with another chocolate. Also from the same suppliers, we like to call it the sweet memory of the high tea. Some uh, chocolates for later on, for tonight, for tomorrow, <laughs> maybe for the yeah. wife. Uh, it's never <laughs> enough from uh, chocolate, <laughs> as a uh, serin knows. <laughs> yeah. Team one, your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cleanse the. Uh, <laughs> sure, yeah. Can we take the passion fruit away? Gentlemen, well done. Welcome to Shanka, and I'm sure you have enjoyed yourself so far. See at the markets and all these things. Um, difficult to be the first one uh, of the rank. Difficult for you, difficult for us. But you made a good first impression here uh, as a first team. What what I really liked was you're confident. You, you brought a little bit of uh, Holland with you and you married it with, with some local produce and you gave us good reasons why and where and whatever else, so great. And it shows you've taken the first leg in, in Holland seriously, you learned from it, you grew from there and you extended that and it, uh, it shows in your presentation today. What I very much like that you did the drinks on this little pedestal in front of us. So we were part of that making of the drink, the pouring of the drink and uh, instead of being sort of done on, on the side table. Mm -hmm. So that was really, really fantastic. It's the first time actually I've seen it in the, in the, in the whole leg of the competition. So well done. Um, your, your, your knowledge uh, of the produce and the reasoning behind it, why you used it, and the marriage of the different items, well done. Your teamwork was good. You, you complement each other. You're both confident. Each one knew each other's area of expertise. So uh, well done. I'll leave it there because I'm sure my colleagues would like to add something as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give me a wire. This is the wire I hold it. This thing. Um how good is it for us to be able to come here and be looked after by people who've already won. And that's exactly what we saw today. Food-wise, Simon and I are pretty damn excited. You're, you're, you're the, the delicate simplicity is what 
food is all about, I think. And what you put with it, I think, for me, it was the it was the the battle of the senses, and this is exactly what we're after here. Um, ice, you know, all the all the basics were covered. We've got enough aromats to sink the Bismarck. Um, which is great. So anything you wanted, I had a little taste of your honey. I don't know if you noticed. It's beautiful as well. <laughs> we didn't, um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it, and, and I love the simplicity and the, the reality of what we're doing tea, um, and it's there. Um, I, I just love the pairings, and I love the way um, you manage to extract wonderful, soft, delicate flavors and textures, and then you throw it together. Thank Many you. thanks. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's good to have you back. It is uh, particularly nice to see how you project your culture because Haiti is as much about the culture, uh, the experience for the guest, as it is about uh, the uh, gastronomy of tea. So, that aspect, I really enjoyed what you did. From your table layout to uh, your dress, to the sincerity of your presentation, it was uh, very tough and uh, we, we really appreciate that. I love the engagement that you offered, that you brought us in at every level. Uh, it is uh, as much a part of IT to be entertained as it is to enjoy fine food and drink. It was lovely that you spoke to us about each of the teas and explained from your personal perspective rather than reading from the label. I value that and I think that it was a sincere presentation. It was uh, authentic and uh, for us what is also important that it is unpretentious, um, so very Dutch. Uh, but, and uh, because this is a global final, we will not be presenting you with a normal detailed uh, critique, but rather as you can see, focusing on the highlights which uh, we very much enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I've never been to your restaurant, but I certainly feel like I've been to your rooftop garden. <laughs> I mean, you really took us there. And, uh, you know, the peas were yeah. just absolutely beautiful. And that oolong oil, I mean, that was just, that's something I'll remember forever. That was just delightful. The nose, the flavour, and it complemented it absolutely perfectly. There were so many highlights in there of perfection, it's hard to sort of itemise them all. But, you know, one that springs to mind is certainly the, the honey and lavender, you know, right through to the garnish on top, the match, the perfect temperature of the tea. You know, it was so nice. And the, the quantity of your, your drinks was absolutely perfect. I think you guys have excelled beyond belief. And, uh, you know, it was, you know, we need to feel where you're from. And you really took us there with the garden. I think, you know, well done, guys. Awesome job. Thanks. Finally, I'll be in your restaurant soon. Yeah. Right. Well, Please. Welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you very much. It was great. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>